Well, we've had a really busy summer here at Goodison Park. Lots of incomings, lots of outgoings. We've brought in some world-class players, wonder kids, elite players in the world of football manager. But we've also let go some of our team leaders, people that really helped us get to the position we did last season. It's all very risky, but I think we've put together a fantastic squad and perhaps we could have a title challenge this year in season 17 of the journeyman it's time to roll the intro Hey guys, welcome back to Small Football Manager 2018 and part 1 of season 17 of The Journeyman with Everton Nanny. In today's episode, we take on the defending champions Manchester City at Goodison Park. It is a big game to see whether we, we have made progress since last season, whether we can go on and, uh, and challenge for the title this season. Pre-season has looked pretty good, um, you know, we haven't played that that many good teams, to be perfectly honest with you, but we were unbeaten, and that's a, that's a good start in my book, but without further ado, let's just have a look at some of the signings we have brought in. We'll have a look at the outgoings first. As you can see, we've brought in more than we've spent. which for a team in our financial situation is very, very good, you know, um... We've still got money to spend. Obviously, the the deadline's passed now, but uh, yeah, a, a lot of players have left, and and it's mainly because they wanted to. A lot of sort of Asian clubs came in to to buy players for big money, and they wanted to go. So that's fine. That that's why Leonardo Trajano's gone. You know, he was a, a a good player for us last season. I was a big fan of him at defensive midfielder. We were playing him out of position, really, but. He had a really good season, and uh, it's a shame that uh, he's he's gone to the Chinese Super League. But thirteen and a half million, we made a, a couple of million loss on him actually, but uh, it could go up to sixteen point five million by the end of his journey. Lucas Holt has gone on a free transfer. We didn't play him at all last season, but uh, he was on about one hundred and eighty thousand uh, pound. So it's it's good that he's gone. Uh, Max Sheldon has gone as well, the left back. A, a bit of a shame this one, and he it leaves a, a big hole at left back. He came in for ten and a half million a couple of years ago from Juventus. He's been all over the world, really, so it makes sense that he wants to go uh, and explore somewhere else. Had a good season last year, though, and, and he'll be sorely missed. Daniel Costa, the the team leader, the man that is is very versatile. He's great to have in your squad. Man United came in, a, a bit of an odd one for me, you know, he only played 12 times last season and only 5 of them were starts, he, he played well, but 25 million, I couldn't really refuse that, he wanted to go, so he, he's gone, unfortunately. Uh, Kristen Hancock, one of the youngsters, has gone as well, and Jed Balderstone, a man who was in the reserves last year, has never really done anything at any level, newly promoted Blackburn came in with uh, an offer that could go up to 8 Point two five million, a club in our financial situation. He's got to go. Now to the incomings. A few that are signed by the director of football, the likes of Bradley Besant. I mean, I don't think he's very good, but in the past, you know, the director of football has put together some uh, good young players in. This is a player I'm really proud of, actually. Juan Martinez. Um, he's already worth £32.5 million. We signed him for £4.5 million from River Plate. He's scored goals. Not tons of goals, but he has scored goals. Um, and he's a four-star player, apparently, leading a Premier League side. You got that message in the scout report, sign whatever the price. Um, and, and he is a really, really good player. Hopefully, he scored some goals. Um, oh, he didn't actually. I thought he did score goals in pre-season, but apparently he didn't. Uh, but he is injured for about three, three, uh, five weeks, I think it is. So we won't see him until after the international break. Kenny Brocken has come in, our first wonder kid of the save. He's 18 years old. Uh, I mean, 
I think I went in to change his contract multiple times. He is a wonder kid, as I said. Um, he's played very, very well over in Belgium. So this guy could be an absolute superstar. He's four-star ability already at the age of 18. He's going to be a world beater in the next couple of years. We had to get him. Um, I started off offering him about 65 grand. He did accept that. Then Man United came in, Chelsea came in, Man City. I thought, right, let's double what we offered to him and just make sure we get him because w with attributes like this at 18, he is going to be a world beater. He is going to be a rock at the back. And hopefully, um, with the, the experience of Sumahoro and, and Martin they can bring him on beautifully but already a belgian international already a superstar at 18 i am delighted with that signing for only 4.2 million pounds next we have uh Irapuan karab uh, or kasab sorry um now the reason we've brought him in is because he has great ability and potential four star ability four star potential he has scored goals. He hasn't had many games in recent years. And that's possibly why we're going to have to keep an eye on him uh, in terms of whether we play him straight away. He's scored a ton of goals at under 21 level. He's only 23. He's worth 41.5 million already. So, I mean, I mean, looking at his attributes, he looks like he should be a fantastic player. He's a complete forward. I am a fan of a complete forward. And I think that's a, a really good signing. Kofi Aziz has come in as well, another one of the director of football signings, as is Will Mitchell. Again, you can see they're not the best players. But this is another wonder kid, Jörg Saltzman, a 20-year-old right-back, Swiss international. He's already worth £30 million. We paid 16 and a half for him. He's had a couple of good years in uh, in Switzerland. 3.5 star ability, 4.5 star potential. He is, again described as a wonder kid so can turn into a world-class player if he is nurtured correctly and then a couple of free sign-ins Kieran Dalton you might be uh, familiar with him from our um, England setup and obviously when he was at Blackburn I remember he scored a ton of goals against us as you can see he does score goals regularly in the Premier League I thought it was a a no-brainer, really, to bring him in on a free transfer. He scored a hat-trick in pre-season. I think he could be quite a good signing. This is a guy I've been talking about for a while. He's 34 now, but Guillermo Santalan has come in for, on a free transfer from Manchester City. He's described as an elite player. He has scored absolutely tons of goals over the years. Last year, didn't really get a chance, but still scored six goals in four starts. So I think he could be a real key player this year. And his experience is going to be vital in the Champions League. Um, I mean, look, look at some of the fa favoured personnel. Lionel Messi, Carlo Ancelotti, Jorge Mino, which uh, is interesting. When did they play together? When did they play together? Hmm. Was it independent? Uh, in, in. Hmm. I, I, I'm, I'm confused. So he played there. Where, where did Jorge Mino play? How, how do they, them two know each other? Or maybe he's just hit off with them really well. Yeah, teammate. There you go. Who knows? Who knows? Um. But yeah, hopefully, hopefully he's going to be a really good player. Uh, he, he's still good, three-star ability, three-star potential. He's actually our sixth best striker, according to the stats, just ahead of Paul Glatzel. But, um, you know, he's probably going to be playing on the wing a lot this year. But we know he can score goals. He's got pedigree, and I think that's, that's what I like in a player. 80 goals and 106 appearances for Argentina as well. Fantastic. And then a couple of signings on deadline day. Andrea Orlandi has come in for as a bit of cover uh, at left back. Um, he looks like a, a terrific player as well. I mean, um, I don't know how he's not described as a wonder kid, but got some great potential and uh, he's going to uh, be some good cover at left back and then we've got Filippo Melagoni another real player one of the last remaining on this save 34 years old 
you know, he's he's getting on a bit, but look at some of these mental stats. He's going to really help us this year with his experience. He's been all around the houses, Atlanta, Real Madrid. He spent a lot of his career there and uh, in Milan the last couple of years. He, he hasn't... Um, oh, actually, he did play last season. He played very well last season, 17 assists. I think this guy could be a really good sign, and, and uh, he's going to slot into the middle of midfield. So... About 10 minutes into the video, we've went through all of the signings. I think we've had a terrific summer. Please let me know down in the comments what you guys think as well. Um, I think we've got a really good squad this year. And you can just see the number of four star players in there is is, is amazing for, uh, for us after finishing 17th two years ago. To come into this season with this much belief and confidence, I'm really, really happy with that. So, the first start and 11 of the season is as follows. We have got Melanyak in goal. We've got Slager, Brocken, Martin and Loris Silva in defence. We've then got Vitor Silva um, in defensive midfield, taking over from Oliveira and Melagoni in, mid, uh, in central midfield. Mino, Santalan and Bangura will start behind Kassab up front. So, there's a lot of new signings. I think, uh, I think four new signings in that squad. To play against Man City today, you know that they're, they're all good signings. There's some on the bench there as well. Obviously, some old faces. Paul Glatzel will always have a place in my team. He's probably not quite good enough for this team anymore, but I cannot deny him his chance of playing in the Champions League, potentially being in a title-winning team. I, I, the start is crucial today. The start is absolutely crucial. I'd be horrified if we got absolutely thrashed today. But if we can go out there and we can beat Manchester City, who knows what can happen? Who knows what can happen? Here we go. Come on, Everton. Let's get the victory today. I just want to play some good football. I want to see something from the new signings. I want to see good performances. And, you know, even if we lost 2-1 or something like that, I would be quite happy. All, all I want is to, to compete today and look like a team that can be right up there again at the end of the season. Here's Bangura on the ball. Loses it, unfortunately. Diaz gets it forward to Gaucho. This is a big chance for Man City early on, and within 50 seconds, they've had their first clear-cut chance. It was a, a ball over the top, which has been our weakness in the past, but hopefully it won't be this season. Brocken over the bar. Unlucky not to get his first Premier League goal there. Brocken, obviously, our, our new wonder kid centre-back. 18 years old. It'll be interesting to see how he copes with, with Man City today. Um, and that's a terrific tackle. What a tackle. That was last ditch. It really was. That was sort of red card territory if you got it wrong. But um, terrific tackle. And, and I just really hope he is going to be living up to his potential. Oh, what a goal. What a goal by Barlete for Manchester City. You can't account for that. That is just sheer brilliance. And, uh, and, and you know, they've strengthened again over the summer. Obviously got rid of some dead wood. And, you know, they're going to be up there again this season. You know, it's as simple as that. Here's Rasmussen. Gets it away towards Lucci. Now to Gaucho. Gaucho pushing forward. This could be a chance for 2-0. Good save by Melanyak there. But Man City definitely... Have had uh, the the best of the first 15 or so minutes. Kasab gets it away. Haven't seen anything of him yet, really. But uh, Pickering's out for five to seven months. That's a, a really tough one to take. He got injured in in preseason, and he's a big player for us. So uh, for him to be injured is is a big shame. But 30 minutes gone. You know it. Man City have been on top. That's what you'd expect. They're the defending champions. Um, but hopefully we can come back in the second half. Maybe even get a goal just before half time. That would be great. Here's Gaucho. Gets it forward. Martin now to Brocken. Brocken now wide to Slager. And Melagoni. That's his name. Gets it forward to Mino. What a ball that is. Mino into the middle. Kasab was there. But the keeper was there first. Poor cross you'd have to say from um, Mino. 
Brocken oh, should have won the header. Oh, it's going to be 2-0 oh, just before half-time. That kind of kills us off in a way. Lucci with the goal and it's it's one of those horrible far post concessions that you, you really don't like and well, keep them put perhaps should be doing better but what more can you do? I mean we're going to go into half time and the full backs is where we're having the problem. Santalan also having a poor game. I mean the, the players I was bigging up, goodness me. Um... I think Slager has to come off. We're going to put Saltz, Saltzman in there. So he likes being a defensive centre-back. Why, why don't you be a defensive full-back as well? We'll see how that goes. Um, Santaland's going to come off. We're going to put Thomas Berg in there. And see if, if we can do anything better here in the second half. We've got Dalton on the bench that we can put on. And, well, here's Melaniak. Can we build from the back? No, we can't. Kasab gets it for That was just really poor. Really, really poor. Ruiz Diaz. Good block. Thomas Berg was there, but didn't really push onto it. Silva. Oh, no. Gaucho. Gaucho on the ball. Good tackle by Brock. And he's, he's been impressive today. Thomas Berg. Brooks. Now Mariani. Brocken's there again. Bartley. Renato Gaucho makes it 3 0. Ah oh dear. This is this is sad. But you know, we've gotta wait for the, the, the team to gel. But again, we shouldn't be getting beat 3 0 on the opening day of the season. That's just gonna really suck all of the confidence out of us. Silva gets forward to Kassab. What a chance this is. And Kassab misses. That was a huge chance to get off the mark, and a shame that he didn't. Here's Melagoni, and again, another player that's disappointed. There's Lucci. It's going to be 4-0. Oh, my word, what is going on? That was really a comedy of errors. Uh, Kasab's going to come off. We're going to put uh, Kieran Dalton up there um, as a target man and see if he can do anything special. Come on. Bangura in. And the middle Brocken hits the post. He's had two free headers and, and it hit the post twice. Um, which is a, a, a shame for him, to be honest, on his debut. To, to not get that goal. Hmm. Bangura's had a good game by all accounts, as has Vito Silva, which is, is good to see. Bangura didn't really have the best end of the season. It's going to be 4 0. Oh, good save. Melaniak again looking like a shot stopper. Mariani into the middle. That's a weird. Alarg, uh, Alarg here. Oh, oh, Thomas Berg. Brilliant. Here's Dalton. Can we get a consolation goal here? Bangura. Bangura is fouled. And, well, uh, nothing came of the resulting free kick, apparently. It's a shame. But second half, we've certainly looked a lot better. I think Saltzman has, has been good at right back. Um, but disappointing, it has to be said. I was really hoping that we could compete today, but Man City are apparently cheats and are too good for this league. But uh, no, I think some positives can be taken out of it. You know, Bangura having such a good game. I think... Uh, you know, Brocken showed that he's got great potential. He's only 18 years old and he was our best defender today. Um, so hopefully he can continue his development uh, throughout the season and, and become a real star. But that is where we're going to leave it for today. If you have enjoyed that, then make sure you do leave a like down below. It really does help me out. It means a lot to me as well. Subscribe if you would like to see more. And I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Thanks for watching and goodbye.